horseman. Joey loved horses. He could do anything on a horse. I got a call from a senior official in the Premier's office. They're demanding to know who's responsible. You're wrong about it. I thought there was hope for you. But you're as crazy as everybody else around here. Stop living in a fantasy, Jake. BBC bought the show, our show, for their Sunday night armchair theater, prime time. Yes! Let me pick you up at the theater and take you to dinner after the play. I'm going with someone. Who? Is it your affair? Hmm. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. The subject is not closed between us, Mr. Roche. Out. Good night to you. Did my cousin Joey really do what you say he did? Sir, it, what, did he really trick your friend out of 3,000 pounds? Well, 700 pounds. You're rogue, Harry. <laughs> What's this? What? Oh, it's Joey Saddle. Can you believe it? Harry's girlfriend had it. You mean you paid that despicable little man? I paid her. I paid her. Oh! Ooh. Oh. Okay, okay. I think Let's we should go. go. Yes. yes. Exhausted, Jake. It's no use you staying here. I'm gonna sleep for days. Why don't you call Luke? Luke? What? I would tell him about Sammy. Of course. He'll be thrilled. You think he even remembers who I am? <sighs> don't be such a bore. I'm sure he misses you just as much as you miss him. I said I miss him. Who is this? This is Mr. Scott's assistant. To whom am I speaking? Tell Luke it's Jake, and I would like to invite him to lunch to celebrate the birth of my firstborn son. Mr. Scott is in America at present. And your last name, sir? He'll remember who I am. Thanks. I'm a father. Yeah. I'm a father. And I feel good. Mm. I feel good. Don't you ever feel good? Yeah, on occasion. Yeah. But I must admit, I, I feel bemused yeah. that you would choose to celebrate this blessed day with me. Yeah. As I said, I am bemused. I thought we were friends now. Why would you want to be friends with me? Hmm. As I said, don't sell yourself short because despite everything you have done, everything, there is something refreshingly honest about you. But I'm not honest, Jake. Right? And you know that. <laughs> as well as I do. No. no. You've not sought me out for my honesty. Oh, really? Yeah. Why have I sought you out then? Courage. You see in me a man who has the courage to take action. And you are a man who is fascinated by men of action. Even when, as in my case, you see it in the service of foolish impulses. 
And I dare say that your admiration for that ne'er-do-well cousin of yours, Joey, stems from the exact same roots. Hmm? Am I wrong? He's not a ne'er-do-well. But no, you're not wrong. It's actually quite insightful. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You seem surprised. A little, a little. I'm fascinating to you because I have no fear and I feel no guilt. And look at you. You hardly believe that's possible. Isn't that right? You surprise me, Harry. Can I have the loan of 30 quid? <laughs> it's another surprise. What for? Well, first some money. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. My friend and I are celebrating the birth of, of his newborn son and heir. <sighs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. You see, I never could have done that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, cheers. Do you like it? It's perfect. We've got it for a whole month. Thank you, Jake. at least a week, Jake. You need a vacation more than I do. It would be so nice to be together. I wish I could. I've got meetings all week long. Besides, I gotta break down that thing for the BBC. You'd be so lonely in that house all by yourself. I've got plenty to do to keep me busy. And I will come up here every Friday night. You just take care of yourself and Sammy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Herschel. What is it, Jacob? I'm taking you to a party. All of swinging London. Are you game? And why do I merit this honor? Harry, did it ever occur to you that maybe I don't want to go alone, that maybe I actually want to go with someone that I consider to be a friend? Uh, well, what shall I wear? Anything. As long as you got dark glasses. Maddie, 
I had a couple of sides in the Christmas cake last year. You were such a wonderful director. <laughs> oh, these are my friends, Angela and Henri. It's right, so wonderful right. to meet you. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, follow me. I can meet someone. This here is Stein. Stein. What? This here is a man who's going to be making pictures here. Oh. <laughs> are you alone, Mr. Stein? Have you brought anyone to take you around the clubs, Mr. Stein? Oh, uh, no. I don't, don't really go to clubs, you think? Yeah. What? Yeah. No, clubs, yes. Of course, I. All sorts of clubs. <laughs> Very private clubs. Clubs that no one even would go in them. Really? Right. And I thought I knew all the clubs. <laughs> well, yeah, photography clubs. Yeah. Well, you are. Have you birds ever posed nude for photographers? Yeah. Uh, two bob the hour, and I won't pay more than that. Also, the other prop. Barbara, this is going to ask you. What is the price? Oh, well, yeah, you picked a fine time to leave. I was just about to make my move. Hello? You could have fooled me because it looked like you were going to sink through the floor. Uh, yeah, well, listen, I, I had a bitch all picked out. Yeah, but how could I ask one back to my place? Hmm? Harry, those girls are ready to service you like a pit crew on a race car. What's the business with taking photographs? Listen, you've got your predilections and I've got mine. All right, we'll go back to my place for a uh, Oh, yeah, well, that would get me home just in time to shave before going back to the office. That'd be nice. Fine, Thanks. you can stay over. You can stay over. Oh, uh, yeah. But the maid's quarters are free this week. Is it? Skip it, Harry. I did what I could to get you laid. I guess yeah. in your world, no good deed goes unpunished. I'll drop you uh, off. Come on, mate. <laughs> Jacob, it's your Uncle Abe. I got some bad news for you. My father died. He passed away earlier today. I see. You should come to the funeral. It's tomorrow morning. I'll catch the first flight out, Abe. Thank you. Jake, does this mean you're coming out early? We both miss you so much. My father died. Uncle Abe just called. Oh, Jake. I'm gonna call you from Montreal. Is there anything I can do? Do you want me to come? Oh, no, God, no. You stay safe with Sammy. Uh, I'm gonna have to sit Shiva. It's expected, so. I don't understand. What's Shiva? Oh, the, the entire family sits inside for a week as a sign of mourning. Oh, God. <laughs> a week inside with my family? You know what? There might be more than one funeral. I love you. Sammy loves you. I'll be thinking of you both every minute. Jacob, why are you up already? I hope it's not too early. I'm leaving for Montreal, Harry. My father has died. Oh, well. My condolence is uh, well advanced in years, I imagine. What do you want, Harry? Well, I was... I was calling to apologize for my bad behavior, actually. It was quite, quite uncalled for. It's fine. It's fine. Well, I've had a thought. Given your absence and your wife's being in Cornwall, would you like me? To uh, outsit the family castle, like. What scheme have you hashed, Harry? What? No, no scheme. <laughs> I offered to do a favour. That's all. Just look after things. You know, perhaps I take advantage to the extent of having a bird in. You know, as I said, 
Shame to have one back at my place. <laughs> See, it's not so nefarious, is it? All right, fine, Harry. Leave everything as you found it, the keel be under the man. Yeah. All right. Thanks, mate. All right, have a great, you know, trip. For your own father's funeral? Everybody's waiting for you. I came straight from the airport. It's good to see you too. Where's Ma? Is she here? She didn't want upstage Fanny. Is that the girlfriend? Mm hmm. Well, I'll see her before the show. Is that Uncle Abe's? Where else? This a good time? Yes. Orthodox. Shows your morning. Let's go. of a curva, a slut, who opened up her legs to him without the blessing of holy matrimony? Ma, do you have anything to drink? At lunch, you drink. It's the occasion, Ma. Jake, your father was not to blame that he was not intelligent enough for me. He would have made a good husband for a simple woman. And my baby, how is he? Nancy's baby's fine, Ma. I'm fine. I'm fine. You don't have to pretend, Jake. Oh, really? Really? I'm having a, a wonderful time. Who does she think she is? I'll tell you one thing. Marilyn Monroe, she's not. You can see the line of the girl already. Who does she think she is at her age? You know, it's all right to let yourself grieve. We all grieve in our own way, huh? I love you. I love you, too. Anybody seen Yossel? He's on the stoop, smoking a stogie. Uncle Abe, you remember the last time my cousin Joey was in Montreal? Of course I do. What about him? You turned him in, didn't you? What are you talking about? You're drunk. Just give me a straight answer. Here it is, then. You come here to sit shiva for your own father and you booze from morning till night and stir up trouble. Who needs you, anyway? Well, you're right. Why am I sitting shiva? I don't believe in it. What, what am I trying to please all of you anyway? Out huh? of respect for your father. Never respected my father. You hear? You hear him? But I loved him. He's not dead a week and you don't respect him? Rotten thing, animal. The day you married that shiksa, you broke his heart. Okay. I shouldn't have slapped you. Forgive me, Jake. Hey, Bloody Well shouldn't have slapped me. You should have given me a straight answer to my question. Can't 
you accept an apology like a gentleman? Did you tell them where they could find them? Did you? You think the world of your cousin, is that right? You put the French goons onto him after the trouble at the Palais d'Or. Admit it, you betrayed him. I wish I had. Were you denying it? I could have done it without batting an eyelash, but I didn't. God's name, why? You have no idea how close we were to a race riot here. But he didn't start the fight. He just, he just wanted to go inside. Loyal to the end. I was there. I saw it happen. I didn't go to help him when they attacked him, but I was there. The kid who got hurt, he tripped and he hit his head. It wasn't Joey. Why have you never said this before? Because I should have stepped up and fought at his side. And now my father's dead and he doesn't have to know that I didn't. He still instigated the whole thing. And you did the right thing because you're a good Jewish boy. Don't claim me. The entire Hirsch honor rests on Joey's back, not your complacent shoulders. And yes, I'm loyal. To the end. Putz, let me ask you this, since I'm the villain in your books. What's Joey ever done for you? Or for Hannah? Or Jenny? His own family, me? I took them in when they were in rags. Oh, what's the use, Abe? Yanko, Yanko, let's get something straight here. We're talking about a blackmailer, a gambler, a small-time crook, a man who moves from country to country with assumed names, certainly with a good reason. Yes, with good reason. He's hunting Nazis. Ay, veis, me a Joseph Mengele yet. Okay, Joey's Bar Kochba, a one-man Maccabee band. He's searching the jungles for Mengele. And if he finds him, what then? He captures him, or he kills him, like uh, Eichmann. From what I know of your cousin, if he is hunting this Nazi down and finds him, he won't kill him, he'll blackmail him. Montreal. Oh, I'm sorry about your dad. Yeah. So, are you sitting shiva with all the hypocrites? I need to speak to Hannah. Is she there? Yep. One second. It's Jake. He's calling from Montreal. Yankel. Hannah, how are you? I'm sorry about your father. You know, we were never what you would call friendly, but he was your pa. And I'm sorry. Have you heard from Joey lately? Got a postcard. About three months ago. What's he doing, do you know? Oh, he never tells me anything. He says he's fine, asks if we're fine. Do you know where it's from? Uruguay? Paraguay? I don't know. I get those places mixed up. Paraguay. It was probably Paraguay. Why are you asking? Because that's where Mangala is. What? It's okay. Just wanted to know if he's all right.
don't really know quite how to put this, is most likely you won't believe me. <laughs> just, just as right. Listen, yeah. listen. Uh, hey, no, you're not invited. It, it's all right. Listen, I saw you sitting here just like a vision. And as it happens, I am a film director. Jacob Hersch. It's all right. I don't know. Well, here, take a quick look at this. So, so you made it? This, this TV show? That is what I'm here to tell you, yeah. <laughs> I need to just do one quick thing, okay? Just check one thing. To light meet it, don't be afraid. Oh. Uh. You're an actress. No! Yeah. So you can make access of me? No, I can't promise anything, of course. I mean, your English is not bad. <laughs> no, it's quite, it's quite charming, in fact. But I would need you to read a few lines for me, just like a wee bit of an audition. Would you be up for that? Why not? Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. 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 The uh, particular role that I have in mind uh, does involve uh, some tasteful nudity. So uh, I will need to take uh, some photographs you know, to show my producers. So uh, I trust that you have uh, no qualms in, uh, in that area. Hmm? Who's in the house? Well, no one's in the house. It's uh, you and me. My house. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. 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 Now you. <laughs> what? Now you. No. No, not me. <laughs> no, no, yeah. yeah, no, no. You're the one that we're taking the snaps of, right? <laughs> Before we take the pictures, we relax. Well, I, I, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this isn't very. Listen. Yeah. C can maybe uh, we could have a just a bit of a, a bit of a drink and a chat first. Oh, uh, boring. Whoa. I don't want to chat. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Right. Oh. What are you doing now? Mm. Yeah. That's oh. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, right. Um. Listen. Uh, this is the matter. No. no. Nothing's the matter. What? Oh, you are homo? No, I, I most certainly am not. No. Then, then why you are not? <laughs> Because I just didn't expect things to go like this, that's why. Oh. Oh, this this is not the way you like. Oh, well, you know. You want to do it in the air. Huh? That's what make you oh, hard. Oh, yes, <laughs> please. Up, up you get. Up you get. Oh, my God, woman, please, calm down. Let's just try to bring it down a few notches, all right? You know, I just need to get into the mood a bit, that's all. You English. All fast must be drunk for fucking. Thank Yes? Hello. <laughs> what are you doing here? I am cast of Hirsch. My name is Hirsch. <gasps> this is my house. <laughs> Where's Harry? Harry? <laughs> Who's Harry, please? I don't know Harry. <laughs> <laughs> what did he tell you his name was? I tell you already. Hirsch, Jacob, I see his paper, yeah? Harry! Harry. <laughs> oh, Christ, will you put something on? You 
You said you were gonna be home till tomorrow. I changed my mind. You? <laughs> Please don't loan it for me, please. If you want it, mate, go ahead, be my guest. She's crazy for it anyway you like, believe me. Right now, Fellini, I'm crazy for one thing. A drink. Uh, I'm going to sleep. I want you both come by tomorrow. Go on. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I said you could touch this. Ah, oh, come on. I didn't think you'd mind. I just, I used it in some photographs. Very, very arty. You disgust me. Get your ass. Oh, hey, take it easy. We can just, just discuss this like civilized gentlemen. Civilized? Yeah. Oh, God. How old is she? Old enough. Listen, mate, you need to relax, all right? You need to calm down, all right? Listen, have a drink and have a giggle. Hey, look at her. She wants it, mate, anywhere you like. Yours for the taking. Your brother doesn't like me. Oh, he's not my brother. Just for pictures. Hey, now don't you give no false impressions now. I gave you what you wanted right in the backside. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it takes an hour before you're even hard. Then you finish. One second. Poof! <laughs> even before you put it in. There is only empty balloon. Poof? Is that why you panicked at the party, Harry? Because you can't get it up. You just like I, to watch. Is that the thing? Don't be ridiculous. I was exhausted uh, from all the bonky uh, bonky. So wonder she's uh, not. Maybe you don't like me with your head. But you like me here, yeah? Oh, yes. Hmm. Not like him. Do it, Jay. In German, right? Yeah. Were you ever with the Hitler youth? How could I? I am born too late. Ah, my brother was in Hitler, Hugen. It was all nonsense. My father saved the Jews in the war. Oh, your father saved Jews. <laughs> Is that what you're doing here? You're saving Jews? Who is Jew? I'm a Jew. He's a Jew. Or me, yeah. No. <laughs> Maybe he didn't tell you that. You forgot to tell her, Harry. No. no, I don't think you are Jew. You don't look, you know. Maybe him. I... Get around that. I no, mate. Uh, you know what? No, you're making a big mistake. Get out of my house! Get right, out! All right, all right. Get out! All right, you want just... You frightened me. Hi. Please get dressed and leave. So you are the film director? Not him? Just get out. <sighs> this is not right. Jewish. Jewish bastard. Hold on now, what's this? Looks like she might be secreting some illegal drugs about her person. Let the poor thing drag herself home and sleep it off. Show his cup. I'll get down. Are you all right, miss? I, I don't know this, what you call a hype. Oh, from Dante English. I, I don't call it a hype, but they did. Step into the car, won't you, miss? We'll see you get home safe. It isn't right what Hoodie do. They... They have both of them the same name. Hirsch. Hirsch, you say? Are you quite sure? Or... Or Stein. I know these names, don't I? They are both good German names. But they... 
introduce these two. Not Germans. Would we be speaking of that house there? Yeah. Yeah, das ist der Haus, where they keep me. You see, you've got to develop an instinct for these things, but roll whenever it. I... I can go home now to my employers. Employers? You are an au pair girl, are you? Yeah. And your age? You're not yet 21, are you? Exactly so. I am nine years old. Teen. Teen years. Nine. Nineteen. Isn't that a lovely innocent age? Mr. Jacob Hirsch? Yes? You did a good job in there. Arranging your bail is a very simple matter, Jake. And the going gets much harder from this point forward. Yeah? We're solicitors. We have no practice before the criminal bar. You need a specializing barrister to represent you at trial. Trial? Yes, Jake, there's going to be a trial. Well, like a public trial? I'm afraid so. I can refer you to Izzy Snapper. He's brilliant with juries. Uh, first, don't take this the wrong way. I, I, don't, I don't want to be defended by a jury. What the hell is that supposed to mean? What English jury is going to believe a Jew defended by a Jew? Come on, Bernstein, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, I don't want some twisty, eloquent point scorer who's going to out with the judge and the prosecutor and chew up the witnesses and alienate the jury and land me in jail for the rest of my life. I see. Now, I'm scared. Can't you tell that? I am terrified and I need help and I need someone that the jury can relate to, someone that they'll, they'll listen to when he says what Harry did and what I didn't do. I need an Englishman, because they will believe every word he says, and you know that I'm right. My friend, Freddie Ormsby Fletcher, might be what you're looking for. He's a very steady sort, very respectable. Perfect. But he's very much in demand. I'm not sure he'll take your case. Well, let's call, let's call him up. I'll pay him anything he wants. It's not about the money, Jake. It's about how he sees your case, how he sees you. Mr. Armsby Fletcher, Freddy. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Hirsch. I'm a great admirer of your work. Pamela and I watch all of your television. Really? Shows. That's wonder that's that's just wonderful. I'm grateful that you could meet me on such short notice. Well, you said it was an emergency. Mm -hmm. I take it you're facing felony charges of some kind? I'm absolutely innocent of all the charges. Of course. You come very highly recommended, Freddy. I know I could use your help. Tim Bernstein is an excellent solicitor and a friend. Now, why don't you tell me all about it, and we'll see if I'm the proper chap for you. Oh, I have no doubt you're the proper chap for me. I'll be assured we will do our very best. I'm utterly assured. I can feel my upper lip stiffening already. What are we drinking? Uh, that is a 58 Cote de Ronde, dear boy. It's a serious wine, and appropriately so, a serious chat, don't you think? Perfect. Absolutely perfectly appropriate. Nancy! Darling! Let me take Sammy, and I want to show you something. <laughs> Hello. Ah, look what I bought for you, your favorites, and quail eggs, and ceviche from Harrods. I'm going to make myself a drink. Good, good. You go do that. I'm going to go put Sammy to bed. Hello. Okay. And that's the truth? Nancy, you know me. I would sooner die than lie to you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, my God. What are we going to do? 
I already have a lawyer. Very good chap. A chap? <laughs> He's an English fellow, as it happens. My solicitor Bernstein recommended him. He specializes in cases like this. What kind of cases would that be? Nancy, we can get through this, like we get through everything, together. Together? Yeah. Together? Were we together last night? Oh, no, wait, it was your, your dear friend Harry and that child that you were together with. Okay. Not me, I was in Cornwall with your infant son, wishing you were with us. For God's sakes, please, do we have to do this? Together. Why should we go through this together, Jake? Give me one good reason. Can you do that? Because I love you, and I would never betray you, and I didn't, and you know that. Surely you know that, Nancy. Do you have any idea what this is going to be like when the press gets hold of it? Oh God, the press. You fool, Jake. You bloody fool. Mr. Stein? You are charged with sodomy, rape, and the possession of cannabis. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Mr. Hirsch? You are charged with rape, aiding and abetting sodomy, and the possession of cannabis. How do you plead? Nancy, I'm innocent of the charges. I swear on the head of our child. Don't you ever hold Sammy hostage to this, ever! I'm sorry. I'm gonna go downstairs. Why is that disgusting pig of a man your friend? I mean, what do you see in him? He's not my friend anymore. Why was he ever? I mean, why did you invite him into our life? I don't know. I guess I found him fascinating. <sighs> See, Nance, all I am is the sum of my fears. Even when I'm sleeping, I dream of Nazis crashing through the window and I'm unable to do anything. Because, because I'm not Joey. Hell, I'm not even Harry. I just wanted to understand it, that's all. And do you? No. Well, I do. It's no great mystery. It's because you're sane, more or less, and Harry Stein is a psychopath. He doesn't care what people think because he's insane. And you're probably just as mistaken about your cousin, the hero. Let's leave Joey out of this, shall we? No, let's not leave Joey out of this, Jake. That is your problem. You cannot leave Joey out of anything. And because of your, your fixation with your horseman, you have let Harry Stein drag you around as if you have a ring through your nose. Joey has nothing to do with Harry. I don't appreciate you lumping the two of them together. It's not me that's lumped them together, Jake. Never believe who I sat beside on the flight, Ketzala. Let me guess, John D. An Indian woman from India, not the yellow knife kind. Anyway, we sit for an hour, we don't say a word. Finally, I can't take it anymore, so I say to her, what's that for? The dot on the head. The dot means she's married. How about that? Here, you got a diamond on the finger. There, they got a dot on the head. Personally, I'll take the diamond, even though your father that cheap. Never mind. Anyway, anyway, you know what else she tells me? In India, they got respect for the mother. They all live together in one big house. And guess who's the head of the house? I don't know. Guess who's the head of the uh, house? I have Just no guess. Idea. Guess. Hey. See. 
skipping? You skipping? This reminds me to take her medicine. Hmm? I didn't realize it was my job to remind her. Nancy, come on. Women her age get strokes. Like that, boom. And hard trouble those run in the family, don't forget, come on. Well, I'm glad to see you have some feelings for her after all. You have to watch her like a hawk. Do you understand? All I need is for her to be with us for years. Bedridden. Jake. What? <laughs> Good night. Jake, you're sweating. I'm okay. The horseman was riding to save us. He was galloping down the street. Couldn't get there in time. There was nothing I can do. Just like always. I'm gonna get you a sleeping pill. No, 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 no. I can't be groggy at court tomorrow. I gotta be sharp. You have to try and get some sleep. No. I've slept enough. <clears throat> It's all right, Jake. I understand. All I could think about is Nazis crashing through the windows. <sighs> Except there, there are London bobbies, and lawyers, and judges, the fake wigs, and black robes. But they're gonna drag me away. Oh, God. My life is slipping through my fingers. Nobody's gonna drag you away, Jake. Have faith. You know what? I'm terrified. Oh. I am, and I'm just, I'm losing control. That's... I understand that you're terrified. I do, but I don't understand why. Not when you're innocent. You believe me. I'm finished if you don't believe me. Try and get some sleep. Morning, George. You seen the papers? No, sir. Sure you have. How could you have missed it? I'm sure the girl's lying, sir. You were just not the type. Neither was Jack the Ripper. This one needs a signature, Mr. Hirsch. Oh, shit. In land of you. Bad news, Mr. Hirsch. Bad news? How could a registered letter from the tax man possibly be bad news? Bye, George. Bye, sir. So, you're pleased I've come to stay with you? It's a help, isn't it? Yeah, Ma. Well, that's good, because Sammy is adorable. He should know his grandmother. Yes, he should. Yes, he should. Sammy needs his beauty sleep. Excuse us. <laughs> I've been here nearly two days. You haven't even told me how I look to you. Don't you think I carry my years well? Don't you think I look young for my age? Ma, I don't even know your age. Your age is the best kept secret since the formula for Coca-Cola. Everybody thinks so. Everybody. Dr. Berkowitz, he adores me. I went in for my breast examination, and he was amazed. He was simply amazed. I don't believe it. At your age, such breasts. And he's a doctor, you know. Yeah, Ma, he's a breast man. The lawyers, they'll cost you plenty. Oh, nothing doing. Still hungry. You pour me a coffee, darling. What? You should drink coffee while you're nursing? Ma, would you just It's got nothing to do with it. Ow! Darn it, Sammy. Jake was a biter. Such a biter. 
I used to have teeth marks all around my nipples. Oh, but he doesn't remember, do you, Ketzela? I remember, Ma. I remember every bite. Coffee in the next room, excuse me. Jake says I carry my ears very well. He says I look very young for my age. But maybe he was just flattering? I could take the baby for you if it's too much of a burden. No, I'm fine. Thank you, Mrs. Hirsch. Mrs. Hirsch, please call me Ma, like Jake does. That's what I'm used to. It will take your son, Mrs. Hirsch. I'll call you Sarah, all right? That makes you happy. Please be careful. Be careful. You don't know what it is to be a mother. Such agony. I have a child, Mrs. Sarah. And if Jake goes to prison, I mustn't even think that. Katsula, nipple biter. So here you are. You ever wish that you married Luke? No. But it's not too late. I mean, I'm still young enough to start another family. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I am. You're my man. Like it or lump it. Nancy, I don't think I can handle her being here. Not on top of everything else. Let me come to court with you today. Absolutely not. It's your first day of trial. I think the jury should see that you have a loving wife. I couldn't bear it, and I'd probably lose what little composure I have left. Are you crying? Allergies, Ma. Allergies? Oh, now it's allergies. Well, they just started after you arrived. Hmm. I think it's all the English food you feed them. Too much pork and bacon. I'm sure you're right. You must cut back, darling. Good luck in court today, Ketzola. Ma? That other one, he should rot in hell. We're in this together, let's not forget. It goes badly for him. It's not particularly good for me either. Mm. Ma! Stein came upon Ingrid Loebner, an au pair girl, in a coffee bar on Finchley Road in Hampstead and tricked her into accompanying him to Hirsch's house. He offered her a drink and what she took to be a cigarette, but was actually cannabis. He assured her that it would be necessary for her to pose naked for audition pictures. Even so, she would not acquiesce to anything more. Stein became menacing. He brandished a riding crop. He whipped her across the buttocks with it. He produced a saddle and informed her that they would play a game of horsey. <clears throat> I'm doomed. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Shall we go? Hello? Who is this? Yes, she's here. Who may I say is calling? Is it for me? A man? Could you take him into the kitchen, please? You can give him some mashed banana if you like. Oh, yes. Oh, my dear. Hello. Luke? Yes. 
certainly. But I have to be back by five because he calls as soon as quarter turns. Okay. Bye. Suddenly, I'm not too unhygienic to feed my own grandson, eh, Ketsu? Hmm? Somebody's tired. <laughs> Sarah? Mm-hmm? Would you mind looking after Sammy for a couple of hours? You're going out? Well, so it seems. Well, what do I tell Jake if he falls? I don't know. Tell him I've gone to Forest Mere Spa for colonic irrigation. <laughs> I have to get some air, Mrs. Hurst. I need it. Oh. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, I... Yes, 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 sleepy, sleepy. Hey. <laughs> so, how's it going so far? Oh, let's not talk about it yet. How are you? Ah, oh, exhausted. Just got back from Canada. Press tour of the latest blockbuster. <laughs> How was Canada? Oh, as exciting as ever. All our old friends in Toronto asking about Jake's troubles, and oozing sympathy, but at the same time hungering for dirt. You know how it goes. I, I, I'm talking about it. Sorry. I'm glad you called. Well, I'm glad you're glad. I really wanted to see you. You know, see how you're doing. How how Jake's really doing. You hardly know him anymore, Luke. Well, we were like brothers once, you know. <sighs> Shit, I miss him. <clears throat> Should I call? Should I just drop by unannounced? <laughs> I wish I could say yes, but I just think him seeing you and being confronted by all your success, I, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's going to help him. My success. A wonderful success. <laughs> you sound bitter. I wish I'd found someone, Nancy. Like Jake found you. You still can. No, I don't know. I don't think so. No, I think from here on out it's tabloid romances, quickie Hollywood weddings, quicker Las Vegas divorces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a certified member of the International Glitterati now, don't you know? I'm not complaining, it comes with the territory. I wish I'd fought for you. The way that Jake did. It was life or death for him and he knew it. It was life or death for me too, only I didn't know it. I have no regrets, Luke. I guess that's all I needed to hear. And are you hearing it? I won't mention it again. I promise you. Please, Luke. No platitudes. Not from you. <laughs> oh, fuck. My face, me. Is the baby any trouble? How could he be any trouble? He's my precious little darling. I live only for him. I love him too, Mrs. Hirsch. But I certainly do not live only for him. I'm feeling a little dizzy. It must be the hot flashes. I'm going to lie down. You were naked when Hirsch arrived at the house? Yes. 
Why? Because he has hit in my clothes. Who? Stein. He, he forces me. He warns me. Hirsch was very important. He says, he says Hirsch could make me a star. But, but he must see what I look like naked. <laughs> he says I must please Hirsch or they will both be very, very angry with me. And you were willing. But he has hidden my clothes. He has, he has a whip in his hand. He hits me with it on my bottom. I think I must do what he wants so he won't hurt me again. Did Stein say anything to Hirsch when he first arrived? He says, do you want her now? She's crazy for it, always. I believe we will adjourn at this point and resume with Miss Loebner tomorrow. friend, Harry. Is what you've done to me an act of friendship? I'm a man of action, mate. If sometimes a little impulsive. Oh, come on. You can't say I didn't warn you. You're pathetic. Pathetic. Well, you'd be ill-advised to turn on me, mate. Because you're in this up to your neck. Just like me. The hell I am. I walked in on you. I'm a bystander. A bystander? And <laughs> listen to him. If it weren't for you, mate, none of this would have happened. What is this? Have you forgotten? Let me remind you. This is anal sex with a minor, Harry. You did that, not me. I just gave her what she asked for, mate. That's not the problem. If you hadn't eaved her out of the house, she never would have gone to the cops, and she never would have even had a case. If she'd been allowed to stay the night as she expected, if she... <laughs> If she'd had breakfast with us, there's not a magistrate in this land who wouldn't have just laughed her out of court, but no, no. We didn't want her soiling your precious fucking sheets, did we? Go to hell. You know, all I've got is this public defender wanker, but if you and your fancy lawyer are thinking of making me the sacrificial lamb, I'll have you in court, mate. I'll do anything I can to see that you get sentenced. Ooh. Oh, you saw that. I've got nothing to lose, mate. You best keep that in mind. Yes? Sorry, did I wake you? You could sleep at a time like this. Well, it is only seven o'clock. Well, it's the middle of the night in Montreal. Oh, Sarah, you've been here almost a week. Surely you've adjusted. Jake called just now to say he'll be late. Oh, my God. What's happened now? Oh, nothing. He and Mr. Ormsby Fletcher, they have a lot to talk about. Mm. They've gone to a pub. It could be very late. Here you are. Picked up some kosher salami and some rye bread for you. Eat it. You didn't have any dinner. I wasn't hungry. I had to go to three shops before I could find kosher salami. Now you eat it, Mrs. Hirsch. I can't. I'm going to sit here and you're going to eat that sandwich every last mouthful. Eat it. I can't. Eat it. But you buttered the bread. What? It's not kosher. I'm not supposed to eat butter with meat. 
Oh, shit, 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 shit. You are not to spy on me. I didn't see a thing. So help me God. You were watching by the window, assuming the absolute worst about me, weren't you? So now I committed the crime. You were not to say a word to Jake, do you understand? I understand. Don't you worry. No. No, you most emphatically do not understand, not for one moment. Do you actually think Luke is my lover? Who said a word? I have hundreds, you know, troops, before and after pregnancy, during, whenever I'm not nursing babies or changing nappies, whenever Jake's out for lunch, they arrive by the sharabank load and they fuck me black and blue! That is a word from the gutter! If you can't have butter on your salami sandwich, how come you can have eggs with your hot dogs? Eggs are parva. Oh, oh, sometimes all your Jewish hocus pocus... <sighs> I'm sorry. Don't you be sorry. Open up the sewer gates. Let's hear it all. How did it go today? Did he say? Well, it couldn't have gone very well. Or else he wouldn't be out getting drunk with his lawyer. Oh, it's the baby crying. Did you coerce Miss Lobno, otherwise force her to have sexual relations with you? Force her? <laughs> no, that's a laugh. <laughs> no, no, we just had a wee bit of fun, is all. Did you commit sodomy upon her person? Was that your idea of fun? She begged me for it. And so, naturally, I, I just gave her what she craved. As many times as she wanted. Now, I can't recall now if it was four or five, seven times, perhaps. I lost count. What's a gentleman to do, after all? <clears throat> Could you tell us how Miss Loblin left the house? Well, as I said, we, we wanted her to stay and share some breakfast with us. But suddenly, she, she bolted. Said, said she had to get back to her, her place before her employer wakened. But uh, would we like to see her again tomorrow night? She offered to return. She told us that she hadn't had such a ball since she'd added off with a couple of West Indians. <clears throat> did you conceal her clothes? No, I did not. She was free to leave any time that she liked. That will be all, Your Lordship. Jake, I never bug you about your drinking. Please don't pour another. Luke's in town. Is he? Oh, yeah. It's in the standard. His rivals' departures, their news. It's like the Queen Mary. He's become a thingier, Luke. Cultural artifact. There's, um... Uh... There's something we need to talk about. Ma, did you take your pills today, Ma? I was a good little girl. Your mother and I had words. It was nothing, a little misunderstanding. Let's not upset Jake. Why not upset Jake? I met Luke for drinks today. You met Luke for drinks today? Well, he called. He wanted to get together with you. I see. What did you tell him? That the time isn't right. No, no, it's not right. I don't need pity now from Mr. Hollywood. <sighs> well, funny as it may seem, I think he needs you more than you need him. I don't think he has any real friends anymore. Oh, poor baby. Anyway, I broke down. He dropped me off outside and your mother saw him kiss me. And she thinks we're having an affair, which is why I asked her not to say anything to you. Did I say a word? I didn't say a word. Would you please explain to her that the reason you are jealous of Luke is not because of anything between us, but because he is so successful? Enough. I'm not on trial here. I'm on trial there. You know what? 
Why don't the two of you sit in the kitchen and eat something parva together? You see? You marry a shiksa. You see what happens? Myself today. <laughs> Try to get some sleep, all right? Do you want to go to prison? Do you think I've lost my mind? I worry you've lost your courage. There's moments. There's moments today I wanted to sink through the floor into the ancient dungeons below. You know, Luke said something about you today. That you never should have married me. That it's not too late to jump aboard the Hollywood Express. That I was a matter of life and death for you. And that you fought. You fought for me. When something really matters to you, you are a fighter. You are ferocious, every bit as much as your cousin. Fight, Jake. Fight now. Don't let Harry Stein drag you down. Mr. Hutch. Were you expected at your home on the night of June the 12th? No, I was supposed to arrive the following day. And what happened when you arrived at your house? I seem to have taken Stein and Miss Lovner by surprise. What was she wearing? She was nude. And this didn't uh, embarrass her? <laughs> Far from it. And then what did you do? I went upstairs and I went to bed. And when did you encounter her again? I awoke at 4 a.m. and then I went downstairs. And what happened then? Harry tried to interest me in having sex with her. I refused. And what happened next? Well, she was insulted. So we argued and I, I had had enough. I demanded that she leave my house immediately. Did you handle her roughly? Not at all. I didn't touch her. And what happened then? She said to me, I'll fix you for this, you Jew bastard. <clears throat> oh, God, they're skinning me alive. I am so insulted. I am, I've never been this profoundly insulted. It's almost over. The lies. The lie. Everybody's lying. The barristers, Harry, Ingrid, me. Everybody's lying. It's incredible. Jake, you're lying to me too. See, this is the worst thing. That you may never trust me again, and there's nothing I can do about it. You didn't do anything with her, really. Nothing, as God is my witness. You don't believe in God. True. But you said I can't swear on Sammy's head, and I, and I would. Bring him in here right now. <laughs> All right. That won't be necessary. I believe in Joey. I'll swear in his life. No. Subject closed. For good. Members of the jury, are you agreed on your verdict? We are. You say you find the prisoner Harry Stein guilty, and is that the verdict of you all? Yes, it is the verdict of us all. Prisoner at the bar, you stand convicted of the acts of sodomy and rape against Miss Ingrid Loebner. Members of the jury, do you find the prisoner Jacob Hirsch guilty or not guilty of possession of cannabis? Not guilty. Do you find him guilty or not guilty of aiding and abetting sodomy? Not guilty, my lord. Do you find the prisoner at the bar guilty of indecent assault? Guilty. Prisoner at the bar, you stand convicted of indecent assault of Miss Ingrid Loebner. We will take a short recess. Well, that 
could have been much worse. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Freddy. One last hoop to jump through. Sentencing. Now, your friend Luke Scott has contacted me and he wants to give character testimony on your behalf. Do you want him to speak for you? Luke is here. Absolutely, outside the courtroom now. No. No. I don't need Luke to speak for me. No. Well, no, I strongly advise it. it. It might mean the difference between you walking out of here a free man and being escorted below sub sentence. You know, Freddy, part of me wants to give up and just go and hide my shame in a jail cell. That's not an uncommon reaction, Jake. It is, however, the coward's way out. Colin. Colin. It's a good man. I've known Jake for years. Since we started our careers together in Toronto, we shared an apartment together and achieved some success jointly. And our ambition brought us to London, where we continue to share an apartment together as we pursued our career goals. <clears throat> Jake found success first as a director and continued to be my steadfast and loyal friend as I struggled with being an unknown playwright. He is a man of singular good character, a model husband and father, and the most generous of friends. Thank you. You've been a confounded fool, Hirsch. You're a man with every advantage. Obviously intelligent and talented. Yet you stand here today disgraced through folly and sheer egoism, perhaps. How in God's name could you allow yourself to get involved with such a reprobate? Did you not have eyes to see his pornographic obsessions? Did you not have a brain? If I am not sending you to prison today, which could be a mistake, it is out of pity for your family, not you, I do believe your wife has suffered enough for your folly. You've been a party to some disgusting act, Hirsch. But I'm going to give you a chance, and I hope you've learned a lesson. I'm finding you 500 pounds in the costs of the prosecution. It remains to be seen whether I have made a silly mistake. The prisoner is discharged You are a humbug, Stein. It is your obvious intent to lead a life of sexual perversion and crime. And nothing will deter you or protect the public from you other than incarceration. I sentence you to seven years imprisonment. just dropped this off. It's a script from Luke. He wants you to read it. Since when does my opinion matter to the great Canadian dramatist? He wants you to direct it. <sighs> you think Joey read about the trial? I don't know, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in Paraguay. Oh, God, I couldn't handle the shame of him knowing. Knowing what? Why are you wallowing in this? It's over. You were found innocent. Nancy, you don't understand. 
I was convicted of indecent assault. Can you imagine what Joey must think? He's, he's living in the jungle. He's stalking Mangala for the good of his people. And what's his cousin Jake doing? What am I doing? I'm hosting orgies for Nazi nymphomaniac nannies. The note says he'd like you to read it. Do you think you could find time for that in your busy day? and protection. Now that I'm approaching old age, I'm going to need yours too. I'll do everything I can. I know that you'll be there for me to protect me against illness and old age with everything that money can buy, but it goes deeper than that for me. I'm not stupid. I'm a woman with pride and dignity and intelligence. Isn't that right? Yeah. It goes deeper than money for me. I understand, Mom. You have a child, too, Yanko. You have a child! Ma? Wait. I don't want you to leave like this. No? Then how should I leave? No. You know what it is? What? What is? I can't forget. I can't forgive you for how you treated Dad. You think I can forgive myself? I'm a foolish old woman, Jacob, my son. But I was a foolish young woman, too. Bring my grandson to see me, maybe. Promise. exactly what I was thinking, and that's why I'm so relieved to have your answer. Successful new chapter. Cheers. Good. gonna do it because it was just charity on his part. Oh, it is just charity on his part. So why are you doing it? <laughs> why are you asking? <laughs> because I think the answer is important for both of us to know. Because I'm fighting for my life. <laughs> He's a wriggler. What did he say he did with the letter from Jenny? With your mail. Uh, in your box, in the den. Hey! 
<laughs> what do you see? Jake, what is it? Joey's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He's been dead for nearly three months now. How did it happen? It was an air crash. A small plane on a makeshift field in Brazil. A secret flight out of Paraguay. So he really was a secret agent. He was smuggling cigarettes. That's what he did for a living. Apparently it's very big stuff there, American cigarettes. That's what he was. A goddamn small time little hustler, a grifter, Taking advantage of poor stupid woman. <laughs> oh, Jake, I'm sorry. Spoke with Hannah today. Oh, how is she? Oh, she doesn't believe he's dead. She thinks he got in trouble with the police and that he staged the crash in order to evade arrest. Just like when he got out of Montreal. What do you think? <sighs> that I don't want to be a confounded fool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 